Yo, a couple days ago the React compiler came out and if I had to summarize what it does in one sentence, it makes your code faster without you having to do pretty much anything. And dude, trust me when I say it works. It's so good, in fact, that it only took about two days for the Next.js team to adopt all the changes that the React compiler made and make it compatible with the framework along with tons of other frameworks, right? Next is not the only one, but it works super well. And by the way, just as a side note, if you're the girl watching that I went on a date with last Friday that knows about my YouTube channel, but not my Instagram, I linked it for you in the description. Please DM me. And anyways, the React compiler is probably one of the coolest updates we've seen in the React ecosystem for a long time. Let's see how it makes our code better. So what is React compiler? Basically, it's a very experimental, very new compiler that they've open sourced and it requires some very sketchy versions of React that probably you don't want to ship into production just yet. It is a build time tool that automatically optimizes your React app and the trade-off between build and runtime is going to be really, really nice to see because in essence, right, your trading speed at the build time, it's going to be slower because it uses Babel, as you're going to see here in a second, to get better runtime performance, which is really, really interesting. Now, how does the compiler achieve that? It understands your code at a deep level through its understanding of plain JavaScript semantics and the rules of React. And this sounds fancy, right? The rules of React. Wow, that's very important, right? Well, not really. As long as you don't write totally ass code, then you're following the rules of React, basically. And it saves you the work of manual memoization, which you could always do in React, right? Through use memo or use callback to optimize your code and runtime performance. With the React compiler in both plain React and also in Next.js, you don't need to do this anymore. The compiler can do this automatically for you, right? and how it does that is extremely interesting. And to see if your app is eligible to be optimized by the compiler, that's really easy. There's a command we can execute in our terminal to see what it does. We can simply run the npx react compiler health check and hit enter. And that's going to analyze your project that you have right now. And you're going to see three different things. First off, how many components are possible to optimize in your app. Secondly, if you're using strict mode, which I'm not doing here, that's totally fine. And then if any incompatible libraries like MobX, a state manager we used at my previous job, for example, um, is used. So basically this just checks against a list of known incompatibilities in your project, which we don't have here. The important thing is right here, compile three out of three components. This means essentially our app is ready to be optimized by the compiler automatically. So let's take a look at an example, right? We're going to have a state in our main component, right? And we're going to render out two things in the component, a button that's going to get an on-click handler to simply increment the state to force an update on the entire component, right? That's all this does. And we're going to display the current counter in our button. And secondly, a completely unrelated component. This is important because as you're going to see this unrelated component, let's define it in another file. The only thing it does, it console logs that it rendered, right? We don't expect it to render when the state changes because the state change that we force from the button into this component, it has no effect at all at the unrelated component, right? There is no logic in the unrelated component that would even need to rerun. But if you're kind of familiar with plain React and how it works, you can probably guess what's about to happen. So let's reload this page. And as we hit the increment button right here, of course, the unrelated component re-renders, right? Which is not great, but it is the way that React works because if anything updates, for example, the state in the button right here in or component, the entire tree downwards, all children are going to rerun. And that, of course, does include the unrelated component, which is not great for runtime performance, right? What if there was something really expensive to calculate here? Well, it would just rerun, even though we don't even need it to. And that's the cool thing about the React compiler. So how this works basically is step, there's two steps, right? Step one is you need to install the sketchiest versions of Next.js and React, some super weird names that you definitely don't want to ship into production, right? And they're very explicit about this. Like this is not production ready, even though it has been run in production, for example, at Instagram for quite a while. So maybe it is production ready after all. I don't know. Anyways, you need some 0.0.0, .0 experimental stuff, which is extremely sketchy. But hey, once you get over with that, there's something really, really cool we can do in our config, right? We can pass it the experimental option. And in here, this now takes the React compiler. And this is an object where you can specify the compilation mode. And you can differentiate between 
two different things basically or both of them if you select all but what we're gonna do right now is the annotation and do you remember what the react compiler does once we use it it said it automatically improves our code base so what we expect to happen is to automatically memoize the unrelated component so that when the state changes through a button click it doesn't re-render we don't want to see the console log of unrelated component re-rendered then of course the question becomes do we right we expect this to not happen so let's click the button and wow we still see the unrelated component re-rendered so the react compiler didn't do anything right so what is it even good for well it depends right because that's of the option we passed into the compilation mode because the react compiler is you probably shouldn't use it in production this is actually the opt-in mode do you remember when they introduced server components in next.js and you have the use client directive and you need to kind of opt out of the server side behavior with the use client well same thing in this react compiler mode where on a component level we can use memo there we go we can opt in to the react compiler for this specific component but it doesn't affect anything else in our code base and this is fantastic for incremental adoption right once we save this and head back over to our browser let's see what happens because now something really really cool is going to happen the react compiler as we click this button right now automatically memoized or unrelated components so that it does not re-render when any state changes that is not related and dude if you're super wild you can you can just screw it right you can just say um, react compiler true and you can just opt out of the incremental adoption altogether and just say you know i don't care if anything breaks i'm gonna use the react compiler and the runtime performance it brings right and you can just say true and that's gonna apply to literally your entire code base is that something you want well i don't know man but you gotta make the decision and uh, if you do then automatically it's gonna apply to the entirety of the code base and of course all the benefits that we had earlier are still gonna be there and now across your entire app now how this works under the hood is really interesting so basically what it does is instead of having your entire component right when a state changes in this component the entire component and all children re-render by default in react right that's not really what the compiler does what it does is it takes that component and all the state logic for example that is inside of it and puts it into chunks that are called called t0 and t1 and t2 now why that t naming convention i don't know but we basically increment the number of chunks that we have and one chunk is basically one piece of logic in your component for example this could be a use state right so if we go into our code this counter right here could be its own t0 chunk and only if the referential integrity of that chunk changes do we actually need to rerun it but this architecture allows us to re-render chunks independently from another right so if this chunk changes well nothing about the others necessarily changes right so we don't need to re-execute them and that's exactly how we achieve this better runtime performance and you can see in the code how this works right if we navigate over to our sources then into the webpack directory of what is actually output and head over to our um, page.tsx for example then this is probably one of the messiest pages you'll see today i can't really clean this up for you but let's focus on the important part basically we're keeping track of something called the dollar sign and that's our cache right because memo that's all it really is use memo it's a cache and we only rerun the logic once the cache is invalid and for example we're declaring or t0 right here this is what i meant or chunk zero and assigning it to the set counter which means that only if the referential integrity for this function that we're saving as t0 changes do we actually need to re-execute it and then we save that t0 chunk in or main dollar sign array why it's called dollar sign honestly i'm not sure but doing this we can then compare the cache in the subsequent re-renders and see if the integrity actually changes and only if it does do we actually need to re-render and you know that's it's not different from the main use memo as we could use it before but the fact that it's done automatically for us without us as developers now having to worry about it but we can just write our code and then have the compiler do the optimizations dude that is pretty cool hey dude what do you think about the react compiler i think it's probably one of the coolest updates we've gotten in the react ecosystem for a long time and it's also really cool to see all the frameworks adopting it so fast to make it compatible to be usable in your app is it production ready well as i said in the video probably not man should you do it 
I think I will, not gonna lie, because I always use the newest tools. It's kind of what I do on this channel, right? I just like to try it out. If you have an app with actual users, unlike me, then probably uh, not the best decision. Let me know your thoughts, what you think, and uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. And then I'm gonna see you in the next video. By the way, I'm gonna be at Vercel Ship event in New York, so maybe not a ton of videos in the next week, but uh, I'll be there. All right, dude, thanks for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye-bye.